again. Okay, so remove it all in the paper towel, then those paper towels can go into the trash, which is a safer bet um, for everyone than having it go down the drain. This is pretty clean now of most solid paint. Now I can actually take this to the sink. The, why would I take it to the sink now? Well, <laughs> because the next thing I'm going to be painting in or mixing and painting um, is the shade shape here, right? And so that will should be just a mixture of your pure hue, in this case, cadmium yellow light, and then your carbon black. Okay, I don't want any trace of white in there. And right now, even though I've you know gotten a lot of the paint out of the brush, you can even see on the brush there's still a tiny bit of white that will be present in that brush. Um, so I want to take it to the sink. I want to rinse it really, really well, getting my fingers kind of up in, you know, running my fingers through the bristles um, and sort of getting, massaging the paint out of it as it runs under the water. Um, when you rinse out, you want to use cool or cold water. No warm water, no hot water. Because that hot water right here, right, these bristles are glued in, right, to what's called the fer ferrule or ferrule or whatever, however you pronounce it. Um, and that will actually dislodge, right, it'll loosen the glue, it'll melt the glue, and the, that will make it um, so that the bristles will kind of detach from the brush and it will impact the longevity of your brush and brushes are not cheap so um, even the cheap brushes are not cheap <laughs> okay okay so let's go to the next one then um, here we go okay All right, so, oh, so I guess what I have done, I have rinsed this already, and I'm showing you the importance of, here, let's pause this. Um, let's actually go back, right? So I have been to the sink here. What I'm doing now is I'm knowing that as I come back from the sink, even if I squeeze out all the water in my brush, it's still gonna be really full of water. So I'm doing everything I can to get as much water out of the brush as possible. I'm also then really cleaning my palette knife really well. Um, you don't need to run that underwater. You just need to really rub it very hard. Um, if the paint really dries on there, just scrape it off with some other sharp tool. I'm just turning the palette um, surface around um, so I don't have to get a new sheet, but I have plenty of room to mix right here. Um, and I'm right now I am what am I doing here oh yeah yeah I okay so I'm cutting and I am masking off right the um, just that cadmium yellow light square I think I made an error here in my masking which you'll see in a little bit but that's fine um, you could you could do this this way um, or you could actually remove this tape up here. This is the area. I cut off the corners um, by not removing this part of my previous masking, but you'll see that's it's not an unsolvable situation. Okay, so we're going to um, take the other piece of tape, cut that corner that way, just at an angle. And then again, remember, leave a little tiny, tiny, tiny sliver of um, your pure hue showing, okay? There we go. Okay, so I'm all ready for this to mix my 50-50 shade. Right, again, I'm going with my fake cadmium yellow light. Um, okay. Setting out a you know, a little blob, right? You don't want, you know, you want to conserve paint, but you want to use enough to make this, you know, work. I probably am using a little bit too much there. Uh, I think I do remove some of this, though, as you can see. I'm taking, I should have probably taken a little bit more off there. Um, but, you know, you'll see this probably turns out darker than it should. 
Um, this is also actually not carbon black. It's it's a um, it's a different pigment. So it's what I had that was the closest thing available. So um, it's pretty close, probably. Oh, yep. And I did try to add. I probably should have added a little a little bit more. That's better. I can still probably go more with that to make them equal. Remember, I want same, equal quantities of um, cadmium yellow light and carbon black. All right, and I really want to smash, smash, smash with the back of my palette knife. Right, I'm smashing vigorously on here and I'm using the whole surface of my knife, okay? Not doing any, like never mix with just the tip. You'll be there for 50 years, okay? So smash and scrape, smash and scrape. All right, and that will, you want a nice thorough mixture that's pretty good. Okay, and then take the excess off there. Okay, and now we get our brush. I have the water somewhere here. I think it's, there we go. Tiny, tiny bit. Okay, you can kind of, yeah, tiniest bit, right? Mix it through the whole bit, the whole blob of paint, mix it through the whole thing. You can see it a little bit, the how that responds to the water. Um, and then we can just start applying. Again, you want a fair amount of paint on your brush. And then you can knock it down by lightening your pressure and just grazing over that surface in um, opposing directions. Okay. And there we go. You can see the lightness of my pressure. It's pretty light touch, just kind of touching up. It's a little transparent. Yours will not be this transparent. It's not that transparent, but it's you will see that you won't have this issue in the way that I am right now. And yours probably will not be quite as dark, I think, either. All right, and again, removing as much of that paint as humanly possible from your brush. You don't want to ruin your home sink for this or any sink for this. So, you know, you will go through a fair amount of paper towels, so just to let you know. So have a lot of those on hand. Um, Right, so dip in the water, don't swish, and then sort of splay those bristles open a little bit so that you get all that stuff out of there. Then you're gonna go to the sink, okay? Not only for your brush, but for your hands as well too, because you don't wanna, I am trying to kinda, I think I'm gonna take the tape off in this video still, but I wanna get my hands clean, you know, as clean as possible before I do that. Okay, and there's a lot of tape to remove, so just be careful that you don't um, blemish the re the rest of the surface. Here is where I realize I have made an error in my masking. Okay, so I'm going to take off some of the areas here. You'll notice there's a few blips that sort of have snuck um, under the tape edge. You can get rid of those later by, um, after this is really, really dry, you can actually use your um, utility knife to scrape off that, that edge very carefully. Okay, I'm just gonna pull that off. Being careful not to get the paint on the tape, um, transferring onto the diagram at all. Okay. All right, so what I do now, I'm going to kind of go through this. I, I actually have to go and mask these areas now because I forgot to do that. I'm going to kind of try to go through this. There we go. And now I'm just finishing up those corners. Okay, we can see that. You guys have seen that. There we go. Finishing up the corners, wiping again. 
and then removing everything. Okay. And then trying, you know, again, trying to touch up little areas. We can kind of scrape that off later on. Okay. Um, so here it is. We can touch that up later. And the last thing that we'll do is touch up that. Um, we'll go a second coat over this as well too. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's take this off. Um, all right. And yes, so that's, um, that is, I, I'm going to stop now because again, this is a long video. Um, and we will, I'll do the second set of videos, um, in our next, um, screencast. All right. Thanks.